Today I'm going to be building um, a 6 by 2 by 2 foot horizontal migration um, worm bin out of cedar. Um, so you need 17 um, fence boards for that. I'm not 100% sure yet how many um, 2 by 4s you'll need. I'll, I'll get that number at the end. I know you need at least 6. Um, so I'm going to show step by step how I do this. Pretty much I'm going to build the side to the, to the front and the back panel first and then the bottom and then attach the three sections together and then do the sides and then the roof will be pitched so that you can actually keep this outside majority of the year i'll probably have this outside um all but like you know june and july when it's really super hot and january when it's super cold it's going to depend on the internal temperature okay this is what one of the sides looks like um, you want to make sure the short end has the full length which is 22 inches and then the lengths will have um, will be 64 and a half. You need to verify that number, but it should be 64 and a half. So you want to create a, a frame on the inside. And then I'm going to end up creating two cross braces, but I want to show you what this side looked like before I flipped it over and added the two extra boards. The two extra boards in the middle are going to keep the wave, because as you can see, there's already some wave in the boards. And they're also going to be used to, to hold the hardware cloth to create the three different segments for the horizontal migration. You want to make sure that you measure um, 24 inches to the outside of this board because that way each of the chambers is going to be 24 inches. This is that's going to be 24, this is going to be 24. The reason why the board is offset this way instead of in the middle is I'm going to wrap the hardware cloth this way and then use a piece of fence to actually screw it to this and like sandwich the, um, the, the um, hardware cloth in between um, this support and the, and the fence post. To make the bottom, you pretty much, um, you just need two supports somewhere in the middle just to hold the weight. This will get screwed to the bottom of the side, so you really just need one screw per per board just to kind of hold it in place to keep it from, from wobbling because you're going to put three and a half inch screws up through the two by fours here into the other two by four. And then you can put some smaller screws in between. I chose 24 inches just like before, 24 inches to the center, so this area here is 24. <clears throat> now the weight will be a little bit distributed, I probably should have centered this, but it'll work. I found the easiest way to put the bottom on the actual frame is to lay the side down and then put two scrap pieces of fence underneath before you put the, the bottom down because the bottom should not be flush with the actual end because you'll lose an inch you actually want it level with the with the two by four so you can even squeeze out a little bit more than that like if you want to add another half or eighth of an inch you can you could probably go in because I, I go in, in on an angle with the screws but I want to be flush with the two by four to install the second um, wall what I found the best way to do is to actually lean up the second wall against the house and then scoot the, the the bottom on top of it line it up as close as you can on the one side and then make sure you come to the other side and do the other screw before you start screwing multiples in the middle because you might not be you might not be square and by this time you probably realize that you've probably run out of screws if you only bought one pound uh, I used the two inch deck mates and now I'm officially out of screws which is kind of a buzzkill so I have a couple extra screws of a different weight. If it wasn't for the fact that I'm only doing the sides, I would probably go to the store. Um, so I'm going to install the sides. I might go back to the store because I still need to put um, a board here to mount this to. So Okay, I have the one side on. I didn't do the, the top board yet, but you know, from the inside, the everything's pretty tight I mean if they wanted to get out they're gonna go out through the holes I'm about to drill in the bottom so I want 23 inches for the boards on the side and what's nice about that is it it kind of finishes off the the sides pretty nice and it, it comes you know depending on how square you are it, it should be close I am obviously not that square but you know we're not building a house here we're building something for worms uh, you know so if you're OCD you might want to use some better tools or some better squares. So. If you want to keep the boards from splitting, what I do is, um, so you know, you have the two by four line here. You can actually go in on an angle even farther out than the actual board 
That way you can give yourself a good two and a half, three inches. Since these are the two inch screws, I mean, you're not holding a ton of weight here. Um, you can go in, go in an angle. I mean, you could still split, like I had a split down here. Um, all I did is move it and then go up um, to try to push the screw back in, um, to push the board back together. But, you know, these are only two feet long or 23 inches, so I'm not totally worried. If, you know, if I run into problems, I can always run a two by four out later here and then reinforce it, but you know, so far so good. I'm gonna do the roof design next and I'm gonna do the roof on a pitch. So the roof, uh, the water will actually um, repel off. So I'll show you pictures of that in a minute. Okay, so what we're doing is we're doing like, um, we're almost doing like an outdoor, like, you know, just like vinyl siding, how you have the overlap and just like regular cedar. So, you know, your bottom board will be perfectly flat and then the next board overlaps by a half an inch. And then this is the only board that requires two screws. Everything else, you're only putting one screw here at the end and it's almost going to be covered by the next board down. And then this is going to be angled up. So what's going to happen is the water is just going to shed down. So, you know, it'll almost act like air. I mean, it's obviously not going to be airtight because, you know, you have this huge gap here, but between the fact that this is going to be angled and you have air at the bottom, there should be enough airflow in here that it shouldn't have to knock any additional holes in it. Uh, I just want to point out, I, 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 um, I had a brilliant idea, which was not a brilliant idea, which is to do the staggered roof. But what I forgot about is the pitch. In order to have this thing pitched correctly, you need to go up about this far. So if you are going to build a box that you want a pitched roof like this, you're going to have to go about another foot up in the front than the back. So I'm going to be redoing the top here and having the top be just regular slats and try to capture most of the water. It's just going to have to be what it is. But, you know, so this is the migration chamber. So... It doesn't have to be perfect. If this bothers you, you can go and create a frame, but we're just trying to get it approximately two by two by two feet in each section. So I took a board and screwed it to the wall to kind of hold the screen in place. I mean, if the worms want to escape, they're going to escape. You know, we're not trying to make it uh, sealed. You know, they'll migrate back. I'm going to put some screen, regular screen in the bottom to try to keep them from just falling through. But again, if they want to escape, they're going to be able to just, you know, walk out. So... I decided to put the um, front board on the gas here so I can roll this around since it's, it's probably going to be too heavy to lift. This side actually, um, this side actually has casters that actually turn, the other side are stationary. So I added, this is actually peat, um, not peat moss, this is actually um, cocoa peat. I'm going to give you a view here. So I have approximately two foot section, and then I'll add another section here once it gets close. You can tell the water, there's still a little bit of water in the in the peat because it's, uh, I mean, in the cocoa peat because it's kind of leaching up the, the, um, the side here. This higher pile here on the right, or on the, yeah, on the right, this is the old worms that came in that I've been storing in five gallon buckets in cocoa peat. That's why it's still the same colors, but this is, this is actually the bedding. So it's about, as you can tell by the side, it's about six inches. This will all end up becoming compost by the time all the food gets in here everything fills up I know it seems like a lot but uh, I'm about to add 2,000 more worms to the bin here so we'll see see what happens so I'm gonna add another 2,000 worms here these are all red wigglers and wow they uh, these guys are pretty active these guys are probably the most active ones yet there's about 4,000 worms in here. I had another batch of worms that I had that um, some of them are in other spots of the garden. And some of them I had too much, too much heat on them and I lost probably five or 600. So, you know, they say if you're not careful, the biggest thing that people do is they overfeed and that's definitely the truth. So, you know, this is a solid, solid bunch of worms here they're all ready to go so I'm gonna add some food here in a little bit and we'll see how long it takes them to disappear okay I'm gonna add some bakashi compost to the worm bin so bakashi is pretty much this is fermented this has been fermenting in my uh, house 
probably three or four weeks now. So it's nice. Believe it or not, there's no smell. Well, it smells like it smells like pickles, but there's pretty much no smell. So this is this is what Bokashi looks like after a couple weeks. You can see the onions are untouched. The lettuce, I mean, everything looks untouched, right? <laughs> this stuff is crazy. So I'm gonna add some. I'm gonna add some food in here. I'm gonna go to the bottom here and get some good stuff here for the for the new worms. I'm gonna dump in you know I'm gonna dump in a decent amount so I don't know if this will break down. This is what's left of a banana shell, banana peel. Um, so if you look, I mean we got tea bags in here, we have strawberries, they turn a weird color. So I'm going to put this in here like this, and then once these worms over here migrate, which I'm going to give them an hour, I'm just going to actually bury the food actually in the, um, so this is cabbage. I mean, you look, this literally in a month never rotted, never turned color because you're actually fermenting your, your, your compost. So instead of doing heat, everything's broken down by, uh, by fermentation.